Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War, Warmer 2, Quick Match Gameplay. This time around we are in the Charnel Valley playing as the Hiles from Avalorn against the Force of the Tomb Kings. And this was a match where I was originally hoping I picked Avalorn immediately because I was hoping to do some Vanguard shenanigans with the new Lyrian Reavers, mess around with Dryads of course, and that sort of stuff. Perhaps throw in some Shadow Warriors, be sneaky. And my opponent picked Tomb Kings, so I immediately kind of realized that's not going to fly. That, that's not really a viable strat there, uh, because like 90% of Tomb Kings builds would dumpster, dumpster that. Um, and so, that said, having picked Avalorn, I wanted to make use of tree units, and that's kind of what this build is centered on. So for our lord, none other than the Feral Lady Alarial, uh, mounted on a horse. Uh, and uh, she's kind of blocked out there, but she is fairly well kitted out. We're rolling with the Boon of Isha, giving us magic damage and immune psychology. Kind of important against Tomb Kings, who have quite a bit of fear and terror. Shield of Safri and Life Bloom, of course, synergizing very well with these spammable spells like Foss Protection and Earth Blood. Uh, we also do have Shieldstone of Isha for that physical resist. Star of Avalor, just to give us those crazy heals, and uh, Arcane Conduit to get extra wins of magic. So all in all, a lot of, of course, very solid support hero. Not not bad in uh, combat either. Her melee stats, definitely, she can give a bloody nose to wars like Arcan or um, Katep. Uh, my opponent actually brought here for example Katep there on a chariot, so against lords like that she can do quite a bit of work. Now besides that we do have two nobles, these guys are there as her bodyguard, obviously they've got AP, anti-large, um, pretty good melee attack, very good melee defense, 100 armored, they're just absolute beasts, and uh, they're one of my mainstay sort of defenses against uh, big, big nasties that my opponent might bring. Now besides that, uh, the main deterrent against units you know, like Shot the Great Bows and Giants is Three units of Eagle Law Bolt Throws. Now these guys are kind of a little tough to defend, um, but they can do a lot of damage. They can outshoot shot the Great Bows very effectively. They will dominate units like the uh, Bone Giant. And given enough time, they'll whittle down even big monsters. And we do have quite a bit of sort of high mass units to bog down enemy monsters if need be. Now for front line, it's simply a horde of dryads. These guys will trade okay with, say, Tomb Guard. Uh, they'll trade relatively well. Uh, they'll trade really well into skeletons and trash units like that to just overwhelm them very, very effectively. And with the support from Alario, they're definitely going to be doing even better. Uh, to anchor things, we do have the Keepers of the Flame, Richmond of Renown Phoenix Guard. These guys are just amazing. Their stats are crazy good. Uh, they've got, obviously, a great bonus for large, lots of AP damage. Uh, charge defense against all, they explode when they die. Uh, and right now you can see with Alario near them, they're actually up to 42% as a physical resist, which is just insane. These guys are an absolute beastly unit, and a lot of fun to use, uh, though obviously very expensive. Uh, two units of Treekin are there to anchor the line, prevent my opponent from sort of just plunging through with his big monsters. And finally, we do have a unit of Lyrian Reavers, and you might be wondering why. Well, actually, the reason was backline defense, because these guys, you can see, have very high charge bonus of 40, respectable melee stats, and I figured if my opponent goes for with Carrion for my Eagle Claw, these guys can mop it up right quick, and I don't have to pull Dryads, I don't, and heroes and Treekin and units like that just suck at clearing up trash, so... Uh, that's kind of what I gambled on there. Now for my opponent, he decided to go with a bit of a push build, but he did bring a Bone Giant, so a bit of an, odd, bit of an oddball build here. Got a little bit of everything. For his Lord running Grandpa Katep, who's not a bad choice. I think, honestly, two King Lords, depending on your strat, anything can work. Like, there's not no bad two King Lord, in my opinion. Uh, they're all valid, <laughs> as long as you know what you're doing. Uh, so he's got Jobs Incantation of First Blades, great cheap buff. Nero's Incantation of Protection, also a great sort of uh, protective buff. Though less useful against L'Oreal because she does have that uh, magic damage aura, which bypasses it. And Trials Incantation of Righteous Smiting, so that's potentially going to buff up the shooting. Of course, my opponent does have his Bound Sandstorm, Arcane Conduit, and um, he does have the Restless Dead, so potentially if Katep is spamming up spells all game long, he's going to be healing this mob of infantry very, very efficiently. Now besides that, my opponent does have a front line of Spears. The Regiment of Renowned Spearmen are in there as well, the King of Scorpion Legion. Um, a single unit of archers, I guess he might have had some points left over, wasn't sure what to do with them. Two carrying on the flanks, looking to harass the, the back line. Uh, two Shopti to disrupt and support that infantry brawl, though obviously against Phoenix Guard they will struggle, as, and against Treekin, I don't actually know who wins. Against Treekin, it's probably a bit of a wet noodle fight. Uh, these guys don't or have pretty crap stats when it comes to fighting against uh, big stuff. They have AP, obviously, but their melee attack is really bad. It's actually, baseline is actually worse than my Treekin here, which is pretty pretty pitiful if I do say so. I'm not sure how that works out. Uh, there's a Bone Giant which I have to be very careful about because it can do huge amounts of work to my Keeper of the Flame. It can absolutely dumpster my Treekin. Uh, it can potentially do some work to the Noble or Alario as well. And finally the Sphinx of Usef. And uh, I'm actually, oh and I should note the Necropolis Knights here as well. So a little bit of heavy cap. Uh, I should note the Sphinx of Usef I think is a terrible choice in this matchup. And the reason for that is because it does fire damage. And one of the common things you're going to see in this match is Dragon Princes. Obviously Dragon Princes are just a great choice in any match basically. You can't go wrong with them. Um, and fire does basically 
frack all against them. They've got 70% fire resist. Another actually common sight in this match is fire phoenixes. It's normal phoenixes, and against those it also does very little damage. So I think the Sphinx of Usev is pretty terrible in this matchup. So obviously against my build, it's not going to be too much of a risk. And actually against the trees, it'll be getting bonus damage because it bypasses their physical resist and gets that fire bonus. And besides that, Granny here from Kateb here does pop his Nerves Incantation of Protection as he's getting Bolt Thrower to two Oblivion, so definitely having a bad time of it for sure. Poor Pops here just trying to escape with his life. Uh, my opponent's standing still a little bit and exposing himself to fire, which definitely isn't what he wants to be doing. Uh, but you can see shortly our Bolt Throwers are going to start focusing the Bone Giant. My opponent here kind of expecting, I think, his Bone Giant to tank better than it can, uh, but it just doesn't have the, you can see here, it just doesn't have the uh, survivability. It's already lost about 1,000 HP in a single volley. That's like you know, you take you get in about you know uh, eight, nine volleys, and the German Giant's dead, which is fairly cost effective. Uh, and you can see there, it's just getting pounded. So my opponent is going to be forced to start committing. You can see he's pushing in with his infantry, with his uh, Shafti as well, looking to disrupt. He's trying to get, sneak around the flank here with his chariots, with his Sphinx, uh, Necropolis Knights, of course, making a, their own run for it. And in the meantime, the Bone Giant is getting pounded down, and it's not really able to tank through it. Now it does get Nerves and Contagion Protection there, doing a little bit of buffage, but really nothing too crazy. He's not getting much value because he's kind of taking hits on single models here. He's not getting much healing value out of his spells, so he's already dropped a lot of Winds of Magic on Nerves and Condition Protection, on the uh, buff to damage on the Giant, and he's gotten very few returns. Now, obviously, he's mitigated some damage, but just not enough in my opinion. In the meantime, the Rishabti are breaking cover. They're kind of diving right through, trying to get in there, do some damage. You can see over here the Lear Nubers kind of circling around in the back, ready to defend the back line as needed. The Bone Giant doing some work here. Snipe the Bolt crew down a good bit, but uh, not able to break them because high elf artillery, for some reason, has ridiculous leadership, like even better than war artillery. Uh, not sure why that is, but uh, it, it just is. Um, I guess Skaven artillery has the equal leadership to Empire artillery, which is stupid as well, but <laughs> what can you do? Uh, Income Lear Reavers here, and you can see they just mop up the carry, and these big birds here don't stand a chance. Lear Reavers just doing huge amounts of damage because they've only got 20 armor. Now, very high melee defense, but that doesn't matter on the charge, because these bad boys have 32 melee attack plus the 40 charge bonus, so they're able to dumpster the carrying very, very quickly and remove them from play. And in the meantime, my opponent does shut down the second Eagle Hall Bolt Thrower, but we're able to clear this bo this boy up real quick, keep pounding that Bone Giant, and get some value. And this is why I love Illyrian Reavers, uh, because they're just so good at clearing up mobs. Now, obviously, the nobles there were also in the fight, but... Um, the Legion Reavers will just do a lot of work quickly. You can see here they dive in on this carrion, and immediately it's getting pounded down, down by about a thousand or more HP in seconds. And that is where Legion Reavers shine. They're just such good mop up crews. Um, and this is something I don't think a lot of people realize: is just how tanky a lot of these back uh, backline harassers can be because of their high melee defense against normal units, so or heroes or units like that. For example, a L'Oreal is not going to clear these guys up quickly. Neither is a Noble, and it's very inefficient. So these guys are able to do the job. They get rid of that carrying. Unfortunately, my opponent here does get his Necropolis Knights in there, which is a bit of a disaster, and uh, something I hadn't really prepared for. Uh, and they're going to start wailing on my poor Reavers. That said, the Bone Giant is basically falling apart. He's starting to crumble, which is definitely very bad for him. Uh, elsewhere, the, the Six of Usev here piling through with the buff cast on it, Jocelyn Incantation of First Blades. Uh, and what you can see here, a Star of Avalorn is going down to protect the Keepers of the Flame from a Vortex. And uh, these bad boys are just holding their own here against the Ushapti and the Spears, so doing a lot of work. Fortunately, <laughs> the Eagle Bolt Throw is not going to last there. and just gets run off the field. In the meantime, though, we get this pit fight going. The Lyran Reavers are in there, uh, holding their own. Alongside, of course, the Lady Lariel as well as the Nobles. And the Nobles, you know, they're, they're going to do work. Necropolis Knights without the anti-large bonus, not going to hold up all that well. Uh, they've got respectable stats for sure, but it's just not comparable to the Nobles with their monstrous melee defense, their anti-large of 35, I do believe. They're pretty, ins they're just pretty insane. Um, and Alariel's not bad either. She's no pushover for sure. And you can see here on the front line, the Keepers, the Flame, holding strong. Over here, we got Foss protection on these guys. Now, my opponent's Archers have basically spent this entire game shooting the Treekin who, with their very high missile resist, with their very high um, armor baseline stacked on top of the spells, you can see they've got 35% resistance to these guys' archery, so they're basically shrugging it off, not giving a darn. Unfortunately, the giant here actually keeps firing, because my opponent did take my artillery offline for the most part. So the bone giant gets to keep shooting, he's still, got, he's still gotten some shots off, and the crumpling, crumpling doesn't have much of an effect, unfortunately, in this game. It's, it's gotten... <sighs> Crumbling is definitely in a bad spot. Uh, it's, it doesn't really have too much of an effect. You can see here, he's crumbling this bad boy at about 12 t uh, damage a tick, which is just pathetic. Uh, so it's not really doing its job and killing him. And so this Bone Giant is going to be able to get some, perhaps get some more shots off. Though he's crumbling and my opponent isn't stopping to shoot, so maybe not. And over here, the Nair's Incantation coming down, but it's not going to help against uh, Noble and Elariel, of course, because they've got the magic damage buff. And these Necropolis Knights are not going to last long. Getting torn to shreds, and the Sphinx just sitting there 
watching their misery as these last few brave knights of Nekara get torn apart and uh, they just crumble to the ground. In the meantime, here in the front line, of course, things are going very handily for us. A bunch of spears is not going to take on Treekin and uh, Dryads. You can see even the regiment around here. King of Kish, the Scorpion Legion, struggling to consistently hit the Treekin. Actually, finally did get some hits in them, that poison, but just a pathetic showing for him. Of course, here the Keepers of Flame doing a great job, tearing everything apart. Uh, Treekin here bogged down those Shopti. You can see they did a lot of work. And keep in mind, these guys had to fight the Sphinx of Usai for early on. So the, despite that, they're still around kicking. Uh, Arian Pocket Adept does break through. You can see there's some of a Shopti coming down. Uh, but we're immediately going to start homing in on the Grand Hierophant. And try to knock him out. You can see those both throw shots coming in as well, trying to ha harass him and force him into a bad spot. Uh, the Treekin here are definitely being bogged down. But you can see they're actually there's moments where these guys don't even take hits because their melee defense is so high. That the low melee attack on the Spears is not enough to hit and apply that poison. Uh, so unfortunately here, Grand Hierophant is not going to have a bad good day. He's getting a run down. He takes some more bolt thrower shots. Unfortunately for me, those Skelly boys are going to get in the way. Uh, you can see in drops and condition of Curse Blades going down, rocking that heal. But at this point, it's just too little, too late. Uh, it's mop up. It's clean up in aisle nine, basically. These Ushapti being torn apart by Dryads and Treekin. Um, didn't get too much done, honestly. <laughs> Had a pretty pretty rough time of it. Uh, they are going to get pounded here. You can see this tree man. He's like way out of position. I don't know what he's doing all the way over there. Um, but that said, it is basically game over. Now over here, the Sphinx does get in there. You can see Lariel getting chipped down a good bit. But at this point, my opponent does decide to GG out uh, with basically the game decided. Um, so obviously a bit of a fun game. Not necessarily the most competitive build. Um, that said, if you're looking for something to deal with uh, Tomb Kings, in my opinion, because Tomb King, uh, Ushapti, Great Bows, and uh, Giants, Bone Giants, are very threatening to your Cav and your... Um, Infantry, like if you bring Sisters of Avalon or something, they're going to get shot to crap by those units. Uh, and because of that, I think both throwers are really the way to go. And a uh, good choice, for sure. Uh, try, and obviously, if you're running a, a lot of you can mess around a bit. You can bring Dryads. Those do a lot of work against Chaff, which you can't do with normal High Elves. So you're kind of stuck with Spears, which don't trade that well. Um, Treak did, did surprisingly well. They bogged down the uh, Shopti, just bought me a lot of time. Uh, definitely not a terrible unit. Lyrian Universe, I, I actually kind of want to use this opportunity to highlight them. Obviously, Noble's Lawyer, that's nothing fancy. That's something generic. But Lyrian Universe, they're cheaper now. 50 gold decrease, which I don't think they deserved. <laughs> I actually think they were good before, but that's beside the point. Uh, they're a really good unit. Uh, for back, They can crush enemy like Cav or mid tier Cav even. Um, they're very cost effective uh, against cheaper, sort of mid range, lightly armored Cav. So, for example, against units like Wild Riders. If you especially if you put them in a few chevrons, or you double double team them, or triple team them, even because it's almost cost effective. Even in that case, you can do quite a bit of work uh, against units like these backline harassers, enemy light caps, for example, um, skeleton horsemen, or against carrion, or against bats. Obviously, you probably don't want to bring them against like vampire counts, to be honest. But um, <laughs> against factions where you really need to clean up some backline trash that's harassing you, uh, these guys will be good against beastmen. Of course, they're an absolute menace. Yeah, they're very very powerful. Um, against, uh, I'd argue that against orcs you can use them a little bit. They can definitely have a bit of a niche by countering a lot of the uh, or green skin skirmish play, uh, especially the back lines with gobble firing lines. And uh, they'll do surprisingly well against a lot of the green skin light calf and even the heavy calf because they do have uh, some very good combat stats. So. Regardless, I do think they're a pretty solid unit. I just wanted to kind of throw them out there, demonstrate a good game where they did some stuff. Now, obviously, the 10 kills doesn't look impressive, but you guys did see how they well they mopped up those carrion and held down those Necropolis Knights for a really long time, so felt like highlighting that. Uh, as for my opponent's build, it's very all over the place, and that's really my main critique. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what he was going for. If you're going to rush, rush for real. Don't half butt it by running a Bone Giant. Um... Now, I guess perhaps my opponent was worried about, say, uh, Dragon Princes, which makes sense, but if you're worried about Dragon Princes, but you're doing this sort of mass rush build, the thing is here, with this build, you're not going to be able to defend your backline, really. Necropolis Knights aren't going to cut it. A single Sphinx of Usef is completely ignorable for Dragon Princes. You've got nothing else, really. It's a bunch of spears that are, once again, ignorable. So, you can't defend a lone bone giant, I think, uh, really all that effectively with a build like this one. So if you're gonna rush, I'd scrap the Bone Giant. Probably get, probably scrap the Sphinx of Usef because I just don't, or uh, I don't think it's really that good. Um, 
Maybe get some Tomb Guard with Halberds in there. Uh, get some Tomb Princes in there for their anti-large. Uh, just get a normal, I'd probably get a normal Necro Sphinx if you want that stuff. Uh, and then maybe Necropolis Knight with the Halberds or something. And to be honest, another tidbit, I'd probably just stick with shooting. Uh, Bone Shines plus Oshop the Great Bow is definitely a pretty solid choice. As long as you bring some disruption to deal with the Eagle Cloud Bolt Throwers. Um, for example, Skeleton Horseman Archers aren't bad in that situation. And uh, so th I think there's just better options in this sort of build. Uh, other options, of course, you can bring uh, Tomb Scorpions, which are just better, I think, than a, even, especially Oshop the Stale, despite their the nerfs. Uh, but regardless, well played to my opponent with the Omega Troll here. Uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it entertaining and fun. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share. If you have any comments, any critique, any questions, don't hesitate to post them, and I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can. Uh, do thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.